Go stream uh, once more. Uh, welcome, good morning. So, a little bit delayed this morning, just uh, testing our new communications platform. I'm trying to improve how people uh, can connect to the trading floor. Any other issues, uh, please do let us know as soon as you can. Um, but if you can hear us and if you can see us, then uh, we should be all set to go. Okay, guys, so I was talking about oil and the move in oil. Um, just over or just under 5% move in oil this morning. Really not of a huge amount. Do remember it's a US holiday today, it's Labor Day. Um, another bank holiday in the US. So what we have here is a move from $44, that's really around the pivot level overnight, all the way up to the $46 handle. The only kind of news we found on this was uh, regarding the earthquake in Oklahoma. Now all of you guys know Cushing, Oklahoma is where the, uh, the United States has its largest oil storage facility. And over the weekend there was a tremble of 5.6 magnitude uh, centered in an area tied to the underground disposal of, of oil. So the concerns were that that might be uh, constricting oil supply. Rather confusingly, at the same time we got that oil news, the comments actually coming through the news wires uh, were that Iran um, were not going to even uh, discuss or take on board any type of production cuts. Now, of course, that would have actually had the opposite effect on the price move. Um, Adrian, Ben, uh, good, can I answer you in the new traders room right now? So we had a new move uh, in oil, a bit of volatility, not really sustained. We pushed above the R2, which is 45.52, resistance at 46. I'm just going to keep my eyes and ears peeled. You know, you don't, a 5% move is a, is, is, is a good opportunity. I tried to get on this move above R2 and just ended up just under flat, really. Uh, couldn't quite get hold of it. Hard to trade when you don't really know what's driving that market action. S&P then. Let's go back to the main event on Friday. And of course, you are all here trading it with us. It was non-farm payrolls. And this was a binary payrolls, I think, for Janet Yellen. And what I mean by a binary payrolls is that if it came up, if it came out much stronger than 200,000, uh, Fed rate hike in September was a shoe in If it came uh, out below expectations of around 180,000, then there's no hike in September. And that's really what we've seen. And you saw the markets respond as such. So if we just have a look at the dollar, first of all, uh, here you can see if I just enlarge my euro dollar chart. Well, actually, let's, let's start with the yen because I think the yen showed this move most perfectly on Friday. I'm just going to go to a slightly shorter term chart here. So non-farm payrolls, boom, dollar weakness. You get the yen uh, gain in value against the dollar. And then, oh, I guess about 30 minutes, about 30 minutes after non-farm payrolls, then the dollar then took back all of those losses, starting to strengthen again, and uh, went down and hit new lows. And those reversals were the case across the board. We got the same in T-notes. If I go to a T-note. Okay, let me uh, share the video again. With T-notes, we saw a similar reaction. Okay, so with T-notes, worse than expected US data supporting T-notes. Now, in front of quite a few of you, I showed my T-notes trade on live prices um, in reaction to this economic data, long T-notes of the weaker than expected data. But you had to be very quick in order to book profits here. You had to be pragmatic and disciplined to not hold on to a trade. And those of us that have traded non-farm payrolls enough times, now you get a window of opportunity between 1.30 and 1.45, really. There's that 15 minutes window of opportunity. Um, if you've got something on the table, take it. Wait for 2.30, cash market open, where you will get some more volatility. But this was a classic non-farm payrolls in terms of the fact there was an opportunity, but you had to be quick. You had to be pragmatic with your exits. Um, and net-net, the market actually finished, certainly when you look at currencies and when you look at T-notes, the market finished in the opposite direction to what you might have expected had you been told the figure before the announcement. One of the interesting things, though, was then if we go back to equities, let me just make my uh, equities chart slightly larger. So if we go back to equities, you can see that the S&P was actually one of the only products that held on to a trend here and that trend was higher, and that trend was higher because of the, the Goldilocks 
Uh, option. I'm just going to close this video one second, open it up again. Uh, the Goldilocks scenario for equities in that this data was bad, so it was worse than expected, sure. But it wasn't so bad that you've got to have a, any concern over the US economy. You know, the, overall, the average, last three months average is still very high. So it's the Goldilocks scenario for equities in that it allows the Fed not to hike in September, despite the Fed uh, you know, being very keen to. But it means a September hike is taken off the table. Yet the data is still good enough to show solid job growth in the US economy, which, of course, equities love. You know, this is a perfect scenario for equities. Now, one thing on the equities chart, if you see here, I'm showing on the top left, this is the S&P 30 minute candle. You can see we're beating out a resistance around the 2185 number this morning, 2182. We're unable to get above. If I go to a 90 minute chart, look at this sideways range now. This is almost four weeks. Can you see this in the S&P? We can't get higher than 2190. And we can't get lower really than 2160. So we've got a sideways range 2190 to 2160. If you go on a daily chart, it becomes even more apparent. In fact, guys, the last time we were out of this range in the S&P was July the 13th. The last time we we're not in this range of 2190 all the way down 2155 odd was going back to the beginning of July. So this is this is perfect for me because this is really teeing us up for uh, a pennant explosion. And to me, I believe on the underside or it could be in the upper side. If we get above 2200, I was reading in the FT this morning, reminiscent. Uh, they were reminiscing of 1999, 2000 where the Nasdaq just started to, to lose momentum at a point when it came to the point that there were no more bears around. The bears just lost the will to live. And it didn't matter what data came out. There was almost a strike by the sellers. And it seems a similar thing here, here in equities up at these levels. Sellers are on strike. But whilst nobody's selling, we can't really get below that 2155 handle and volatility is just slowly ground to a halt, which is perfect. That's just what you want after August leading into a busy September. And the main action for September will, of course, be this Thursday with the ECB. Conflicting reports in the ECB from the analysts that I have read. Some are talking about the fact that Draghi will be announcing his QE3 programme he will be trying to change the rules this Thursday in terms of the amount of corporate bonds or government bonds that he can buy. Type it in the room. Let me see if you guys are on the ball here. What is the minimum deposit ratio? What's the, what's the deposit rate at the ECB? And therefore, what is the rate below which the ECB cannot buy bonds? And just to give you a clue, this means the first 19 years of German government debt is, debt is not accessible to the ECB. Ah, Christian, new traders, well done, spot on. Anyone get, else get that? Minus 0.4%. At the moment, the ECB cannot buy any bonds with the yield below minus 0.4%. And that really curtails their availability of supply, given what has happened to the bond markets over the last few months. So it's likely if the ECB do do anything, they might try and uh, adjust that negative deposit ratio. Okay, I'm going to keep this market briefing quite short and sweet. I know a few of you are having a few issues with that new platform that we've put on so you know with this type of thing it normally takes a bit of tinkering around so i'm going to be back on the mic shortly i just want to make sure everyone that is logged in live into the trading live services here with us and ready to go ahead so i'll speak to you again shortly guys i hope you have an excellent week ahead um, main action really coming on on thursday with the ecb but also one thing to point out that data out of the us on friday with non-farm payrolls really still to a degree does leave us hanging certainly about december and thankfully that means i think we're going to get a lot more action um, off us data if we start to get bearish us data now in terms of manufacturing retail or gdp then the yell janet yellen's going to have a difficult christmas put it that way guys i'll speak to you shortly um let's sort you out get everybody logged in as they should be okay see you in the room